I'm Nick Gregorio, welcome to The Bar and the Stars. Today we're talking indie film, but first, he's who we book when somebody good cancels. It's our producer, Cooper Hagedorn. Thank you. I'm dressed up for the occasion again. You might remember him from Attack of the Show. He's currently on a Kickstarter crusade to relaunch Film Threat, the publication he founded 30 years ago. It's Chris Gore. Thanks All for being right. here, Chris. <laughs> He's the low-budget indie version of Jason Bateman. Buffalo 66 is actually based on his real life. It's our resident barfly, Phil Larigo. I'm surprised you didn't go with my scene in the brown bunny. We can act <laughs> it out if you want. <laughs> <laughs> We're sipping on that coffee and cigarettes. That's a reference to an indie movie you've never seen. All right, guys, I want to know. Mm. Is indie film dead, or has it actually been reinvigorated by BOD and other digital platforms? Coop, what do you think? Uh, no, it's not dead at all. VOD is great uh, for indie films. All right, uh, what about you, Chris? What do you think? Uh, VOD also, uh, you know, selling through uh, platforms like VHX, iTunes, Netflix. It's not dead. It's definitely transformed into something that makes a lot less money. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Phil, what, yeah. about it? what do you I think? I think it's dead as we knew it, and it's changed, and I think a lot of people are curmudgeon about it. So, yeah, yeah it's... In a way, it's like a Cronenberg film. It just oh, keeps yeah. evolving and changing, and it gets grosser, and yeah. then it gets Until like Jeff Goldblum again. Up and then the, of the it's typewriter right. comes on your hands, and you get raped by a cockroach. Exactly. That's, that's exactly right. Naked lunch. <laughs> naked lunch reference. It's a naked lunch reference. Yes. Yeah. I knew where he was going. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do think there, there was there that kind of golden era of indie film that's dead. We're, ne we're never going to get that back. Now we have the Netflix originals, like mm -hmm. straight to VOD, Amazon platforms, VHX, which is another pretty decent platform. I actually watched John Snepp's um, superhero, yeah, Superman the documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened? What happened? That yes. great documentary. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, I'm a little bit bummed. Cause I feel like kids today yeah. will never know. Like, there was a certain the like romantic, like if you're yeah. talking about like the '90s and stuff like that. There was like you know Tarantino used to work at a video store. Kevin Smith, like kids you know. like what's a video store? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, true yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but no, there was that romantic quality. Uh, you know, for those of us that were into those sort of movies and those those filmmakers, where it's like, oh yeah, this guy like he just he he did it like from the bottom up, like yeah. he he cashed in all, all of his favors and he, he made this one thing and Miramax bought it and then you know now he's directing multi million dollar. Yeah, now movies. he's one of the like, biggest yeah. directors in the world. Well, what I think is is that dream is kind of dead. You know that yeah. rock and roll dream of like I'm gonna start a band, we're gonna be successful, we're gonna make millions of dollars. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't happen in any yeah, film. Now you just get drunk in the rainbow room. By exactly. Yourself. Like in the, in the <laughs> 90s, what? you could make an indie movie like Kevin Smith, where you sold your comic book collection, you you know put 20 grand on your credit cards, you took your movie to Sundance, and you made a deal with Harvey Weinstein on a napkin, which actually happened true, by the way. Mm. If you ever watched that documentary, The Snowball Effect, uh, or it's on one of the DVD releases of Clerks, I think mm -hmm. the 10 year anniversary edition, which I have signed by Kevin. Um, nice. that, that documentary, The Snowball Effect, is brilliant. It shows how how he, how he sold his movie and made money and became Kevin Smith that we know today. Right. Uh, but, but that dream is kind of gone. It's kind of, it's, it's disappeared. What's, what's exciting the way it's evolved is with this thing in my hand, with this black mirror as it were, also a great name for a show, uh, <laughs> you can shoot, edit, put your music, Release your movie with this thing in your hand. Spike Lee's sure. Black Mirror. <laughs> yes, Spike Lee's Black Mirror. But now it's but not like as magical as it once was. At, at, at one point, right. film was shot on film, and that was the most difficult thing. Like, you and uh, what do you, you got something to say? Yeah, he, here's the thing. It's yeah. like, I grew up with this shit, I yeah. love it, but like, we're all talking about the 90s. We all, we all were there. We watched <laughs> right. those Kevin Smith movies. Awesome. <laughs> we watched Slacker and was like, I don't get it, but I love it, okay? You, it, it, it's somewhat, uh, you know, leaning on the nostalgia or being like, you darn kids don't know indie film right. because they, because but that you was need us. to know the history of the media. But you need to know the history of the medium. And it was like the the entry, the the barrier for entry was shooting on film because people didn't sure. accept things that were on VHS or super VHS. It needed to be a film until Dogma came around and the whole digital revolution. But before that. You need to show up with a reel. You, didn't, you couldn't show anything yeah. else in a theater but a film reel. True, but to, to, to your point about you got to know your history, you got to know the medium. Don't Before the through. 90s, <laughs> independent film didn't start with Tarantino or with mm. the Weinsteins. You know, you had, I mean, John Sales, John Cassavetes, you know, you had people. You, you, Soderbergh. George A. Romero. Spike Lee. 
see. I mean, you had you had people. Night of the Living Dead. You had people who were some of them were more professional. Some of them were were from the film student camp. You know, whatever. It was even less appreciated than like than like the guys in the '90s who you know like Kevin Smith and people like this. They were just guys going out. They didn't know if anyone was ever going to see these. They were just going to screen it in like their friend's theater. You know, uh, people like that. The the big films that we see in the theater aren't shot on film anymore. No. Right. I mean, you know, everything is digital, and you can throw a digital filter, and you can make it look like uh, you can add the grain and make it look like film. So, so that I don't have an issue with, right? Like, I think I think that's cool. What's what's excite What's exciting about indie film today to me are ideas. Right. That's something yeah. Hollywood cannot replicate. Everything, if you look at Hollywood now, it's a reboot of something from 20 of an years adaptation, ago. Right. Or Ghostbusters, adaptation. In, Independence Day, whatever, or an adaptation of a property that's been around for 75 years, or a book that was a best seller, it's all properties and franchises that have a tried and true history. What's exciting about indie film are new ideas. And I always look at indie movies, I don't judge them the same way right, as before, I would Before you get on this, I want to mention that you are, you're currently promoting a Kickstarter campaign oh, right, right, yes. to bring back Film Threat, 30 year old publication, it was a magazine kids, they used to have those back in the day. It's, it's, you know it is? doesn't get much more yeah, indie yeah, than yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. How have you seen indie films evolve? Like, well, First of all, if I might to your audience explain what a magazine is, it's like, <laughs> it's like the internet but on really thin slices of wood. <laughs> this is what the end. This is basically what a magazine was. But uh, a Kickstarter, first of all, it's tough for me to do because the three hardest things to say are "I'm sorry," "I love you," and "I need help." <laughs> and I need help to bring my to bring my website back and basically restore all these archives for Film Threat. And and the thing the thing is though, doing a Kickstarter, I have to say, it's kind of humiliating in a certain way. It's like asking all your friends, "How much money do you like me?" So, oh. but, but the cool thing is we're doing this Kickstarter to bring the, bring the site back, restore all the archives that'll have every edition of the print magazine in digital form that you can download oh, for free. Oh, cool. We're doing an app wow, and we're great. doing, we're launching a podcast network and then we have, we just launched a stretch goal today uh, where we're getting money to do a documentary about indie film in the 90s. It's, the, the documentary is called Film Threat Sucks. And you can see you can you can see the trailer for Film Threat Sucks on YouTube, but but um, I we, gotta say we, it's a very meta thing that you, yeah. you you're you're raising money to have an indie publication to, and it just it, it kind of it's a little meta, but yeah, I mean yes, it's a little meta, but but well, like, how, how have you seen it, the indie film world evolve? Like you were there at the ground level, you had to go to the festivals, watch these movies, and then type up on a typewriter. <laughs> <laughs> Practically, but, yeah, but, didn't handwrite it. I mean, yeah. it's definitely changed from the standpoint of you know. Filmmakers putting, uh, you know, their budget of their movie on a credit card, that's kind of gone away. Mm -hmm. Because now with, uh, you know, access to iPhones, I mean, there was that film Tangerine, which played right. at Sundance, yeah. that was shot with an iPhone 5S, an yeah. iPhone 5S. Yeah. It did have an anamorphic lens adapter attached to it, that's though. That's Which does, give, it gives you something. Right. And it was graded quite, aggr like, color graded aggressively. Right. And they were sure. able to stabilize the rig a certain way. So right. they still used... Filmic techniques that the average person wouldn't that have been a right, whole right. lot of yeah. They're like, we dropped the camera and the screen broke. We, we don't have it anymore. No more. We can't. Middle of the take, yeah. someone texts yeah. you. You're like, oh, come on. Leave a flip phone now. But for sure, the, the technology has definitely changed. But I think that the, the way that I look at indie films, I don't judge the, an indie film the same way I would judge, say, Batman v Superman. Right? Like, like I, I look at an indie film as sort of a bird with a broken wing. It's like I want to nurse it back to health and I want it to fly and free and be successful. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. like you can see through the flaws because every indie film will have flaws. It'll either be in the casting, it'll be in some of the technology, which usually doesn't happen, or sometimes in the writing, it's not quite perfect. But if you can see like a vision, like a tone, like in there, right. that's what I look for, that sense of discovery. And I think there's a whole new generation of filmmakers. Yeah. They're gonna make feature films on their iPhones, and they're gonna be brilliant, and one, one of them is going to break out. It's going to happen, and it's going to make more money than one of the movies in the top ten box office for that week. Right. Because the, the filmmaker is going to so. self-release it. Like I am so optimistic about this happening. There's going to be a new, I don't, I don't new, like new revolution. Off, Phil's chomping at the bit over yeah, here. this this is what I think is happening. Is indie indie film now is like a farm team. It's like a sports farm team. Right. All right. right? And you got you got Ryan Johnson. You know he makes Brick, and then he makes Looper, and now he's directing Episode Eight. Then you got, uh, the, what's the guy's fucking name? He made Safety Not Guaranteed. Trevorrow. Colin Trevorrow. Yeah, yeah. So Colin makes, Trevorrow. 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 Yeah. And then he makes, oh, here's Jurassic World. Oh, wait, here's episode nine. So it's like, it's the, the, it's this kind of like pool of cultivation where, where these, these but filmmakers I would, these are. These guys were like real filmmakers. They were at it for years and they finally got a shot. Like they took a shot on their indie movies. What, he, what Chris, I think, is talking about is like that indie indie that we don't even know yet. We don't even know what that looks like. We're talking like. about yeah. the guys Weird like just, filmmaker. Just, yeah, guys making their first movies. Right, making their first be, movies. Yeah, like, but uh, what's unfortunate that is... That haven't worked in the system. I think that was the big part about indie film, mm -hmm. at least the 90s version of indie film, yeah. was 
these guys weren't like, oh, I'm a PA, and then mm -hmm. I'm a second AD, and then I made my first feature. It's like right. some dude in some town somewhere. But here's what, what's different now is the internet in, in all, all areas levels the playing field where you know a single mom in Iowa can find out the same things that you can if you live in LA and you haven't gone to film school yet. Yeah. If yeah. you want to put in the research, you can learn all that shit. You can there's learn a the ton terminology. Of, yeah, a ton of you big. can order the same stuff at the same prices from the same fucking warehouses. That's true. Oh, I want to jump the Cooper. I want to jump the Cooper. Oh, I just want, it's interesting what we're talking about. Just today, uh, there's been uh, I think two Netflix series announced that feed right into what we're talking about and this idea of indie, the, the one especially that you're talking about, like from the 80s and 90s, this generation of filmmakers. Uh, Spike Lee's She's Gotta Have It, which was his debut feature, I think, in 86. Very indie, it was, it was practically a student film. I mean, he shot it in like less than two weeks. Uh, black and white film, I think. It is a ten. It is now a, a ten episode series uh, on really? Netflix. I wonder if he's so, going to bring back his character, Mars Blackman. That would be I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see. We'll that. remember yeah. who that is. And then, and then uh, Joe Swanberg, uh, you know, from the kind of mumblecore school of filmmakers, he just got the trailer for uh, Easy, which is his anthology series. Uh, is coming to Netflix, and it's got a very, you know, graduated mumblecore feel right, to right. it. Right, right. No, so I like weird. that. I, I think that I, I do hate mumblecore, though. I'm sorry. No. Well, a lot yes, of people yeah. like. It. I like the I like the naturalistic feel to it. Maybe, I, maybe I you like don't what like they the. Were, I, I think like the Duplass brothers, if you considered their yes, style. Puffy chair. Puffy, Puffy chair was, yeah. was a that was a that was the best version of it that I've mm -hmm. seen. Everything else is just very masturbatory. I don't know. That's mm. just, it's my. I, okay. it's, it's like music when you try to play like like Sonic Youth or you play like old like like punk from like the 70s and and. You know, people today are like, I don't want to, that's just noise. I'm like, well, you wouldn't have your pop punk. You wouldn't right. have your indie. You wouldn't have your strokes if we didn't have this stuff back then. And that's kind of what the, that punk rock way of, of mumblecore and stuff paved the way for the indie kind of where it's now, where you have the Duplass brothers having yeah. Yeah. fucking HBO series. Well, that, that, that HBO feels, series, yeah. Togetherness, was yeah, it's great. great. I right. mean, it's, but also that long form storytelling, I think, is that's a great place for indie filmmakers to cut their yeah. teeth. Right, I mean, making an indie feature is about can can you first of all can you accomplish this, and then secondly, yeah. can you create a tone that's original, and can you carry that over into something? I, I actually think that some of the better work is happening in television at the moment. Right, mm -hmm. I mean, so much great. That, there's television. an argument there. Is television now the new indie platform, or at least yes, the ideas we used to get if from it, indie? Yeah, yeah. If it's not now, it's going to be, or or it's about mm -hmm. to be. Yeah, like he was saying, it's it's kind of the next place for it. Yeah. I mean, maybe we get a little inside baseball now and kind of talk about like what the indie world was or what it means. I mean, indie has become an aesthetic, which that's very disappointing to me. You see a yeah. lot of shows and they're like, Wes Anderson, that's indie. I'm like, no, it's not. I'm like, it's Wes Anderson. He's like yeah. one of the most beloved filmmakers. Every star in Hollywood wants to work with that's him. That's a rich, was... rich person dressing like a poor person. Yeah, yeah I'm West like, <laughs> is. indie wasn't a visual Hipster. style. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It wasn't set decoration. It wasn't Napoleon Dynamite. It was right. just these stories you wouldn't get in the mainstream, right. funded and produced by people that weren't in the mainstream, they were completely out of it. And I think right. now it's it's been hijacked a little bit, like Aziz Ansari's show, Master of None, which I'm, I'm mixed on it, but they worked really hard to make that look like it was a cheap show. But like they shot in the streets of New York. Permits alone probably cost more than most people's film budgets. Yeah. Uh, that, that's right. true, but I, but I think indie stuff it really explores character. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you look at like big Hollywood films. I'm not going to Suicide Squad to learn about all those characters. Even you though we got did, it, though. It's, yeah. <laughs> Except for Slipknot, rest in peace. <laughs> but but, but that, that's, I think, what, what indie does well. I mean, a film like Napoleon Dynamite, which is a classic to yeah. me, love that film. I, I, I mean, that's all about this weird dude. Right, it yeah. really doesn't matter what happens there. And I think Hollywood films are all about these are the things that happened. And, mm -hmm. and, and indie films are about this is about a person and a journey. I, and I think actually in, in recent years too, uh, year by year, and I don't see them all, there's so many, especially with VOD and stuff, you can see them easily still, but I think indie movies are just much better crafted than, than a lot of the studio films in terms of just like- Well, you have to like, put some serious like thought into the grammar of filmmaking, yeah. like making a scene and taking a character, like you said, through the paces and having work for the actors to Yes, do. no, one of the things, and, and I think- uh, Business, uh, as they call yes, it. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I brought this up when, I, when uh, Boyhood, uh, uh, the Linkletter film, it's, you know, it's, it's a huge sprawling movie, but I remember they're in, driving in a, in a car and like someone's on their phone and were it a triple A blockbuster or a, a big budget movie, 
it would turn into a PSA because someone got in a car accident with because they were on their phone or right. someone was drinking. And no, it's just kids were fucking around in a car and they're driving. And you're like, every scene doesn't have to have an immediate like kapow. It doesn't have right. to have a fast food like, oh, I'll take a driving while on the phone. Oh, now you have a car crash. Like, yeah. it's not a. Sometimes a scene can breathe. Sometimes yeah. it can be a red herring. Sometimes it can just be a moment in time, and and that's what indie. It, it doesn't have to defend itself when it does that. Right. Well, and I, and I think one of the big problems is visual storytelling, which is very difficult to do. And that's what, as an indie filmmaker, you had to do. You had to figure out, how do I make the scene work? Because we don't have time to shoot coverage from every single angle. Mm -hmm. We don't have eight different cameras. Um, and I think that's what Hollywood, they take very lazy. When I watch the cinematography, Star Wars episode seven, eight, what was it, seven? Yeah. Seven, seven. seven yeah. Yeah. yeah, Force Awakens. Force Awakens, it was like, how many cameras did you shoot? I mean, Amazing Spider-Man, they had an H camera, A, B, C, D, F, G, Q, S, D, H, cameras, shooting a conversation scene. I, I, I've like, seen, how can you not get it? But, but how I can you not get it with I, eight fucking cameras? I've always believed that like with indie film, limitations are actually your strength. Right. Yes. It forces you to come up with a creative solution Star Wars because a new hope. of your limitations. You can't spend all the Disney bucks that you get right. yeah. to make a good movie or make a passable Star Wars film, you know? <laughs> right. Like, like you, you, you really have to be creative. That's why, I mean, I, I, I mean, we've all seen like great shorts on YouTube where you cannot right. believe a kid in his room made this thing, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I, I admire stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's, it's forcing a creative solution. Yeah. Well, I think, John, to speak to that point, uh, somebody who's very much involved with both the 90s indie scene and today, like John Favreau can, is kind yeah. of a good example of that. I think, that he kind of, I think he kind of... That uh, guy doesn't get enough credit for what they did with Swingers. I mean, that was yeah. a very difficult production. All things well, considered, the way they shot that yeah. movie, that was an impossible production. That was like... Yeah. Someone was smiling down on them to pull that off. Well, and I think I, I think he, shooting in a casino in Vegas, like <laughs> guerrilla style, and the right. scenes are good. They're not like right, right, he's yeah. rushed. It's not like, in a bag, like a hidden camera, <laughs> like prank, no. like Jamie Kennedy prank show or some shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and and, and 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 I think he, you know, by the time uh, what was it, Cowboys and Aliens, I think he kind of OD'd on doing the studio thing. Yeah. And then he goes back and he does the Chef stuff. and kind of does the indie roots thing, and now he's kind of back with the Hollywood thing. But it's interesting. To speak to your point about that, like the the necessity being the mother of invention, I think he kind of he's an example of someone who's kind of done. There both is something ways. magical about that. Like you yeah. don't go for a long take mm -hmm. if you can shoot coverage. Like you don't you don't gamble on it because you're like, well, let's just be safe and let's just get it, make mm -hmm. sure we have it, and like let's get a close up of him. But then you really have to choreograph a long take. You're like, what's the most important? We're working on Har Happy Birthday, Harris Malden and Green. You would sometimes sit down and be like, we don't. Have time to do this. So what's the most important aspects of this scene? Or what do we need to convey in this moment? An indie film, that kind of gun to your head is like, we don't need all that shit. Let's just, let's yeah. just do this. Like, just yeah. say this line, and then it's a look, and then it's a movement, or it's a moment, or it's a beat. Yep. Yeah. Where when you have all the money, you're like, let's shoot it from every every angle we can mm -hmm. imagine. And then but that's why these movies are three mm -hmm. hours, and they get cut <laughs> down. And when you see, and it's not yep. just Zack Snyder, but these director's cuts are so long, it's like, because they have so much footage. But yeah. to go all the way back to what we initially were talking about, I do think VOD is that evolution. And mm -hmm. it, it kind of yeah. creates a safe space where it's like, look, you can get together a, a, a much smaller sum of money or have an angel investor or get enough capital or get a distributor and then say, fuck it, we're going to release this and we're going to see what happens. And I think Joshi was one of the more recent movies mm -hmm. where the, the, the star power, you can tell everybody was making scale or fucking peanuts. And you got Middleditch and you got Jenny Slate and you got Nick Kroll and all these people pushed this movie into the forefront. And there's other movies like um, The Invitation, Dead Dad, like mm -hmm. just really small stuff that you're only gonna see on VOD. Sure, you know, in a big city like LA, you can go to a, a, a boutique theater and, and see it that has one screen or five screens. Yeah. Or you can spend six yeah. bucks on iTunes and watch it at home and you know these people are getting a big cut of this movie. Yeah. And, it, and most of the time your TV's probably bigger than the old indie screens were anyway. Yeah, like, <laughs> no, no, no. But, but yeah. The reason they do those platform releases, they do New York or LA, you, or both, is to get the reviews. They yeah. wanna get the reviews and then that publicity, that just means Means I'm still going to be sitting in my place in Pasadena, just clicking the the <laughs> order button. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I, you know, I can watch it like uh, a film like Z for Zachariah with uh, uh, Chris yeah. Pine, uh, a super low budget shot in New Zealand with Margot Robbie, uh, a low budget sci-fi film. So I, I love that kind of thing. I like having that option. Well, now there's sure. the there's the new indie that's like all movie stars in it, but they, you know, this is like their like passion project or their fun like right. hobby project in between. And I still I still don't count that as in to me. Like, yeah, it's it's creative and it allows these actors to kind of breathe and, and mm -hmm. take some chances, but it's still like it's Chris, nah, Chris Pine and Margot yeah. Robbie. I mean, I would, I, would say that that's, I would say that's indie. It's it's really just like what 
what it costs, right? And what, what they're going to okay, pay. So it's and for the, the most part, people are getting nothing for oh, it. Guys, I hate right? to do this to you. I'm sorry I got to cut you guys off. Uh, last call, final round. What's one oh. indie filmmaking trend that finally needs to be put to bed, Cooper? Uh, I, I would say the static, sh like just standing, just where a character <laughs> oh, you mean the guy stands. looking at coffee for like five to ten. Minutes. Yeah, I mean, I even watched the the Lobster recently, which is a good movie. That's a good one, but like just these people don't stand static. People that don't much. stare. They people don't, don't, they don't stare don't, off just, into a corner of a room. Just mm, I mean, not, not, not today. Hospital, you got your yeah, fucking yeah, phone like, out. Like, yeah, yeah, do it yeah. as this. I, what about you, Chris? Yeah. What do you think? Uh, let's see, road movies. I think we're at the oh, road movie. The road, the road movie, <laughs> coming of age movie, and disease uh. movie. Like, I got a disease, <laughs> gonna die, the, you know, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Phil? What do you For think? me, it's 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 style over substance, but in that like quirky way. And I think Napoleon Dynamite and Wes Anderson are the two yeah. the two bookends. And for what that happens, we're Mills, fucking. Mills, what did you have, Mills? What was the character trope? Manic Pixie Dream Girl. Oh, Manic, yeah, those guys are. Yeah. Oh God, that's. She's a smoking fucking... a pipe in a bubble bath with her socks on and pink hair or something. I'm shit. the new girl though. Yeah. yeah. It's, <laughs> it, but like, the way... I like to read Hemingway, but I also but collect upside down. wooden gnomes or something. And I shit. only drink grain alcohol on Tuesdays. <laughs> like. Fucking weird. I used to do roller derby, but I quit. <laughs> um, one of my, like, I think the, the trope that has to go away is the white suburban middle class guy telling the story of how he's white suburban and middle class and how oh, it's yeah. just tough dealing with <laughs> yeah. that. Well, who's going to tell that story then, Nick? <laughs> who's going to tell it? <laughs> right. I, yeah. Like when Zach Braff did it, you're like, you're too old to be doing this, Zach. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. With it's like, it's like a grain, every... of, grain of sand on a beach, and he's just like, I'm so different from everybody else. Oh, like, motherfucker. I just don't How many crazies in. can he go? Yeah, that, yeah. that's what Sean really needs to die, is just like white people complaining. Yeah. Yeah. White people oh, complaining. It's like, like how boring look, their life is. Yeah. Like how yeah. nice and comfortable. That, I can't stand that Wi Fi was really touching. It was like, fuck yourself. I don't know. Like, I'm not famous yet, and I'm only 25. Yeah, his problem was the Garden State opens up, he's a non six successful actor anymore working right. and you've, you have a job you have a fucking job you're a waiter it's yeah. like yeah Natalie Portman played like one of those pixie how annoying uh, is Natalie Portman god forbid uh, <laughs> all right guys and they just tuned out that's <laughs> all the time we have for today she got an Oscar for flaring her nostrils in Black Swan let's recap what we've learned we all, as we all drink oh. while Cooper has never seen coffee and cigarettes it's clear it's from true. the tired look on his face that they represent the majority of his diet it's true. I, I have problems, you eat and coffee it's not beans. funny. He I told me he ate a ham, a cheeseburger in his car yesterday. All right, let's just <laughs> maybe, from McDonald's. We just keep Chris Core thinks the next generation of filmmakers are going to be shooting their movies on iPhones. In fact, he's plugging iPhones so hard, I'm surprised I don't see an Apple sponsor patch on that army jacket. Well, this is oh. this is my uh, Star Wars. I'm a veteran of Star Wars. Oh. That's what this okay, jacket is. Okay, that's... <laughs> oh, so but you're a survivor. First of all, Nick, I appreciate that you dressed from Reservoir Dogs. Oh, it's like everyday oh, cosplay. You you're, you're Mr. Moif. I don't know. What, <laughs> what color are you? Mr. Yeah, Snooze it. dies first. <laughs> oh, Phil Arrigo thinks that going to see a film in an indie theater is too much of a time investment. And he should know. If Gallo had included all the bizarre things that Phil had done to Christina Ricci in real life, Buffalo 66 would have been five hours long. I, I cannot talk about those things. I saw like. Vincent Gallo in real life and I told him, I like your work. He's tinier than you think. As for me, I acted like I didn't know The Force Awakens was the seventh installment of Star Wars, but anyway. in reality, I'm just pretending not to care because I'm still hurt that I wasn't cast in the movie. Oh, uh, that's a tough one. Well, I just got word this indie's been picked up for a sequel. Tune in next week for Space Bar 2, The Secret of the Ooze. Bottoms up, ass is out, Space Bar's closed. All right. Cheers, guys. Who plays you? We got a Hemsworth. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually attractive. <laughs>